Hello all, and welcome to this first episode of Silo Makes, where I'll be creating a sci-fi Martian outpost using characters from these two sets. The first set contains a few vintage space characters including these gentlemen contemplating the vastness of space, and this fellow in a very awkward pose. I'm also using this pilgrim set from IMAX, specifically this character who seems to be casually keeping watch over his land. I wanted to create a universe that combines early settlers and space exploration, so naturally I started by doing some surgery. I removed the head from this gentleman and added back the helmet and pack from the other character, along with some additional details. This guy was lucky and stayed intact. Everyone got glued down for painting and set aside for now. I had a couple of unused glass domes. I never really liked the mirrored gold finish on the base. I decided I would paint it and use it for this project. Before I started recording the process of making this diorama, I had created a mock-up that I didn't really like, so I took a step back and started over. I began by patching my mistakes using a scenery mixture of plaster, paint, and Mod Podge. A main element for the outpost is this heatsink from a 3D printer that broke down. I imagined this being some sort of interstellar antenna. I used wire mesh for the top of the outpost. Although the scale is not completely right for this size of model, I think it looks fine and it'll do for now. It's time to glue down the outpost to the base. I used some hot glue and made sure to place it in the correct location this time. Using some small wood dowels, I marked up and cut supports. I used tacky glue to set them in place. The idea for the structures in this universe is that they are mostly built using salvage materials from previous exploration missions. As new settlers arrive, they use whatever materials they can scrounge to build outposts, homes, and whatever other buildings they might need to survive in these harsh new environments. Steel wire was used to create railings. These were glued down using superglue. Mod Podge was brushed on to certain portions of the landscape. I'm adding it to locations where rocks, gravel, and sand would naturally accumulate. Whenever I'm outside, I like to keep an eye out for materials that could be used for dioramas. In this case, I'm using various sizes of gravel and sand gathered from outside my house. I tap the excess off and save it for later use. Using one of the characters for scale, I mark up and cut a sheet of styrene to create a door. I rounded off the corners using snips and sandpaper, creating smooth transitions in all sides of the door. After making sure the scale worked with the rest of the model, I added more detail using styrene sheet and glued it in place. Using an X-Acto knife and hobby saw, I cut up popsicle sticks to create an access ramp. I used super glue and a few drops of accelerant to help with the process. I continued around the base adding popsicle sticks until the full ramp was completed. I then added further support details to the underside of the ramp. This one decided to blast off. Moving on, I created some sheets that would cover the top of the ramp. Again, using styrene, I cut a strip into smaller pieces and then glued these down to the support structure using super glue. It's now time to add greebles. I found a few parts like this plastic anchor and this random piece I didn't end up using in the end. I added metal tubing to the anchor to create a secondary antenna. I also added tubing to the main antenna. This piece will serve as an access hatch. I continued around the model adding greebles such as vents, panels, and other elements that help to add to the character of the outpost. I imagined this being some sort of research and communications outpost connecting to other planetary systems. They would most likely have different scientific instruments to analyze their current environment and send this information to other settlements. I added more metal tubing to the tops of the antennas to create height and variation. I use metal wire to create cables connecting the antennas to other elements on the sides of the model. With that, the modeling stage was done and it was ready to take out and prime using a black and white cenithal highlight. The landscape was given an even coat of a brown wash. This is made using watered down acrylic paint. Some areas of the ramp were feathered off to create the illusion of dust naturally settling on horizontal surfaces. A Mars red wash was added over top of the brown. 
This is similarly made using watered down acrylic paint. I use Citadel Marsh and Iron Earth to add texture to certain portions of the model, taking into consideration spots where dirt would naturally accumulate. I painted the support structures for the outpost black, doing my best to avoid other surfaces as I was doing so. I used the same black color to paint panels and some greebles on the model. This color was also used for both antennas. A metallic gold paint was used for the tops of the antennas. This same paint was used to highlight small details. I decided to go with a bright blue color for certain instruments, as well as for the cables connecting instruments to the antennas. The model was given a mixture of brown, rust, and black washes from Vallejo. The rust wash was mostly applied to horizontal surfaces where fine dust tends to gather. Black wash was used on the underside of surfaces and inside corners to create contrast and shadow. I added the rust wash on top of all surfaces to keep a consistent weathered look throughout the model. The brown wash was used on the cables to tone down the blue color. It was time to move on to dry brushing. I used a dusty rust color to further accentuate the weather feel of the outpost. An off-white color was brushed on to bring out high spots and highlight edges. As a final step, I used metallic sharpies to create the illusion of scratched edges and natural wear. Off camera, I painted and weathered the two characters with an interstellar settler color scheme in mind. And with that, the model was done. <laughs>